been a little close to that. But what I think what's so significant, uh, in fairness to some of the backdrop on this, is that this is phase two of, I think it's three phases, right? Four, Four phases. phases. Four phases. Um, but it's an important phase because, you know, in fairness to, to the real world, this project was started under the prior administration and, and, and now straddles. And we want to, as I've said, want to be supportive of everything that's going on that's good in the city. And this is one of those things, one of the major things that's good that's going on in the city. You have a huge investment here um, by Todd and his family and their business. Um, on this site which is the second phase, some, if I get my numbers right, $33 million, I think 63 overall for the first two phases of, uh, of housing that helps not only develop the site, but also helps to further the development of the Marina Village site in the South End, Jack Banton's district that Jack represents. And Jack's been very supportive of seeing this project advance. And I know that with the transition, in all candor, one of the issues that came up, and it came up before the city council, and if I can jokingly say, some of the councilmen actually put their neck out for, for this project, um, in one, more than one way, um, was a tax abatement. And, and in, in, in fairness, in the context of uh, of, of what can often happen in in uh, in an election cycle, the abatement, which was a tax abatement that was that was targeted with this piece, became a, a point of discussion and a point of agreement or disagreement. And I want to compliment Todd. I want to compliment uh, David Corris. Uh, I want to compliment the patients, the city council, and even Ken Flato, our finance director, who put their heads together to say, how do we make sure that this great development project that's good for the city, that's good for the east side of the city, it's good for the south end of the city, but it's good for the city and the public and, and for uh, the housing authorities well move forward. And so today, actually yesterday, a resolution was forwarded to the city council that will make will make, allow this project to continue at whatever pace you can do to get it completed with our full support and, and cooperation and support, assuming it passes all the questions the city council has, and I know they have some, and I'm confident we'll be able to answer them. Um, with a city contribution, there will be no tax abatement, but there will be a substantial city contribution to ensure the financial success of this project. And our contribution was first discussed is saying, how do we not, selfishly, how do we not do the tax abatement so the city can get the most money that we can out of this? And we will, and it's estimated to be somewhere between $250 and $300,000 a year. But in addition to that, if the city is going to contribute uh, to be a partner, uh, with, with, with um, not only with the state on this, um, not only with um, with Todd uh, and his family and the development company, um, but we put real money into it. And the first uh, amount of that will be $1.25 million capital money this year, which has already been put through the capital plan with, with thoughts of how we can make it best work, and $700,000 of capital money next year. My idea and concept was, how do we not only not do the tax abatement from, from a, a neighborhood perspective, how do we do beautification with this project? How do we make sure you have sidewalks that are nice, aesthetically pleasing, uh, lighting, uh, uh, nice fencing and, and, and trees and everything that a community would want? And that is contained in the project. Whether dollar for dollar, I know the allocations are not specifically this money will go for that. But the bottom line is that our contribution will support the overall project and this project, is, is, as wonderful as it looks already, will look even better um, as a result of, of the overall commitment and the city's commitment. I think that's probably a fair statement of how this would work without getting into what money's coming from the state and the developer and the city. We made a substantial contribution. I'm very happy that the city, um, all of us, were able to stand here today in partnership to see this move forward. I'm going to stop there, uh, ask you to say a couple words. You're probably more eloquent than I am. But I uh, wanted to thank you for being a part of this and for your patience and working with us. We appreciate it, and we appreciate this event today. Um, this has been a fantastic journey to get to this point. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of support from the city and the transition from the old administration to the new administration and making sure that these, the pieces can come together so this deal can be financed um, and we can start construction in the very near future. Uh, the first phase, we expect to actually be complete uh, in units delivered in early July and August. And we also want to start the construction for phase two within the next 60 days. Um, this is a tremendous outcome right now to get to this point today. Um, and we want to thank the city, the city council, um, and the whole administration for all the effort they put into this to, to get us here.
Thank you. Just give me one. So if this was 33 and the f total 63 million. About 66 million in total. They're both about 33 million apiece. And the company also is developing the marina site in the south end. That demolition is already underway if you've had a chance to go down there. And how much is, is it? Yeah, so the city contributed $2.6 million to the demolition over there. We currently have 125 units have been demolished on that site. Uh, we have uh, applications into the state to do the new redevelopment housing over, over at that site. Um, we expect to hear today or tomorrow regarding the outcome of that. But your poten the potential for your investment there in addition is $67 million and more than how much in the city? Uh, between this and the additional two phases over here, as well as the future investment over at Marina Village, will be north of $250 million. Um, and a portion of this is going to serve the residents that live in Marina Village as relocation resources, as well as house people at other income levels uh, in the city of Bridgeport. Before we get to questions, a couple other people, and I want to ask each of the elected officials to speak, but David Porras, who has uh, shepherded a number of projects in the city, who's making transition. Um, I don't think this is a la his last official act, but if it was, it would be it would be certainly an appropriate one. Once you, once you come up, sure, I'd really like to add. Thank you, and, and thank you to Todd, your continued investment in the Housing Authority for the continued partnership. I'll be very brief just to say, um, you know, the mayor covered all, all the major points. Just to add that, um, you know, this project is in such a crucial location, um, helping to position the east side for achieving its potential that we see on the near horizon with the pending construction of the second train station, with the reconstruction of Seaview Avenue. There's an incredible amount of public investment going into the east side and, and Mill Hill and, and East End. And we see this as just the first, not the only, but absolutely the first significant private investment that will piggyback on that public investment. And something crucial about this project that can't be overlooked is the visibility. We talk so much about the view of the city from I-95, from the railroad, the perception that people have of the city. Um, I happen to take the railroad many days a week. You know, 80,000 people or so are passing by on the Northeast Corridor every single day. Those people have looked out on a vacant land, vacant block here for decades. And now they're seeing buildings on the horizon, buildings that'll house the next generation of bridge porters, the next generation of residents of Fairfield County. And so for all those people who are passing by, thinking about what's going on in Bridgeport, what's happening in the city, now they have a visible sign of the progress uh, that they can look forward to and we can all look forward to um, in the coming years and decades. Thank you. We have uh, at least three members of the Bridgeport delegation here and a number of members of the city council. You guys want to come up, Senator, State Rep? Uh, Hey, Rep, you guys want to, Ezekiel, want to say a few words? Because the state's put some money in this, and the delegation's been supportive of this project. If any of you want to speak, please say a few words. Sure. I just want to thank the Gannon administration, the McClutchy Group, the Housing Authority, and our city council for all of their hard work. As a member of the Transportation Committee, uh, we always talk about transit-oriented development and fostering that in our state. This is a key example of working together what we can do to help revitalize our city. So I, once again, I want to thank everybody and turn it over to Representative Santiago. Just basically, I'm amazed at everything that, that, that's been done since the last time I'm here. I'm very excited to see all the work. Um, great news that a deal looks like it's going to happen for phase two. Something I was pretty concerned about because it, 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 what's hanging in the balance is more uh, affordable housing for our residents. And that's really the focus in my mind. The state has uh, done their part and the city's doing their part from what I can see. Thank you very much, Mayor. Appreciate that. That's great that you were able to work that out. So um, this is this is something that is, is a great great thing for Bridgeport. So thanks everybody that we're on. Thank you, uh, sir. Well, I just want to thank you, you guys because you, you guys down in the house I spearheaded this thing and I came in at the end of it with Mr. Byers. Um, I was working with him on different projects here, and we're so glad to see something like this um, arriving in Bridgeport. This boosts Bridgeport up, as Mr. Corey said. Um, we're all for it. We have it. Thank you. Before I introduce the Housing Authority, Milta Feliciano is going to go to her committee. So I want to make sure that um, it's her district. She's been cautiously pushing me, uh, frankly, to make sure that we had a, we had a positive result here, but one that meets the needs, not just the neighborhood, but the concerns of the city council. And I think we have all of that. I'd like to say a couple words along with some of the other members. I just want to thank Mr. McClutch for being so um, patient with us and making sure that we reach a deal that's great for you and the, the community here. 
Um, we fought really hard to keep this community clean and safe and, and hopefully with this new development, we'll keep moving it forward. So thank you, thank you to the, to the um, state representatives and the state senator for helping as well with bringing in this funding. And hopefully you'll bring in some more to keep providing um, more housing. Thank you. Yes. Why do you want to say um, I just want to thank um, our delegation, our state delegation, who worked really hard in ensuring that we got the funding from the state and the plus people for taking um, you know, the time to develop here in Bridgeport and make sure that our community is one aesthetically um, appealing to those that are designed to make and build a future here in our city and helping our community to grow and be prosperous with all the transit oriented. Um, development that's happening and it's going to forge our city forward, which is on the catalyst to do great things in the future. Hey, I'll make sure you get this picture. Come here, you'll see. I just want to thank, you know, at least the city. I'm joking. I'm uh, Todd. I've been working with Todd. I've been calling him and Todd. Just trying to see if we can work together. Uh, I'm working with George, you know, I'm the liaison for housing, so we're just trying to bring the puzzles together and hopefully we can get this going and create some work for Bridgeport residents. And we expect 150 more. jobs out of this between the two jobs. phases. So that's, 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 that, that's big, that's big, I'm, I'm happy with that. So, like I said, Todd, keep doing what you're doing and hopefully we should have this, what, 2016? We're going to start construction this summer. Now you're too young, but I go back far enough to remember when this was uh, a troubled housing project called Father Panic Village. And um, I see you nodding. You, I think you're too young too. But, <laughs> but um, to see it be transformed um, under your leadership with your, your financial commitment and partnership, um, it brings brings great joy. We have the uh, the housing authority, one of the chairperson, the executive director, and I could ask a couple of words. Because you're a big guy, you stay here. Yeah, let, let our commissioner stand right in front of both of us here. Uh, first of all, we'd like to say thank you to the mayor. Uh, these projects, there's a lot of planning that's gone into it. The housing authority cannot do uh, these types of things on our own. Uh, if we do it right, though, with partnerships with JHM, our co-developer, uh, the city, the state, and the folks helping us funding HUD, uh, we can transform the entire city. Uh, these types of projects have to take place for investors to come to this area. We're creating jobs and developing people to build those jobs. Uh, quality housing will come out of this. We'll have mixed use facilities. Uh, railroad station will be here. There's so much going on. Tremendous time for Bridgeport, but it all comes together with a partnership. I thank the mayor right now for uh, you know seeing uh, what we are doing, but also seeing how that fits into his vision to uh, transform the city. So the housing authority wants to be a partner. Uh, we thank the mayor again for all that he's done, and we're ready to work with the city to uh, convert Bridgeport into the city we want to see. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank Mayor Dan for having us here today. But I was raised here. Okay, I lived in Marina Village. I played in Father Panic as a child. And not only as a commissioner now, I speak as one of the residents and one of the citizens here in Bridgeport. To see all this construction, to see all these things going up, is delightful to me. You know, I can see Bridgeport growing back up again. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for anyone? Mike, anything? Anything? Anyone? Well, thank you for coming. I'm going to go around and thank everyone again. Thank you. Good job. You know everyone, right? Yes. You know the commissioner? You know the senator? I do this too, you probably know I don't know. How are you? Are you the Did you go up to this Where did you go up to? South Hill? Oh, you did this too? Okay. You gotta meet these three guys over here. Danny Roach works in my office. How are you? Great to see you. Mario Tessa, Tessa is the only Democratic town chairman in the city of Bridgeport, a friend of mine. John Ricky, director of the public facility.